You've heard of Xero. It's NZ Tech's biggest success story, a $7 billion accounting software firm that 1.4 million small businesses around the world, including the spin-off, used to sort their finances. When Rod Drury founded Xero 12 years ago, it was a tiny startup with just 100 customers. They were a long way from Silicon Valley, competing against giants, had no money, and their celebrity endorsements weren't that flash. My name's Peter Jackson, and uh, this is my wife, Sonia, and we've got a, a plumbing company on the Capity Coast. But they dreamed big, got some famous but quite bleak investors. So Vela Ventures, who was part of Peter Thiel's group, um, they've come in again. Went through an annoying twee phase. This is Arthur. Hello. Treehouse architect. And are now just freaking huge. They're so big they can afford to fly the spin-off to Brisbane. We're here for ZeroCon, a flash conference which brings together their employees, customers and partner businesses at an event we called Coachella for Accountants. It's not at all what I expected an accounting conference to look like. This is taking probably the least cool profession in all of human history and making them feel special. I love that. Traditionally, accounting has been allocated for the accountants just to deal with, whereas what we're trying to do is put the power in the, in the hands of everybody. And then we've built on that and built a community. A community. That's what they all say. But these people were excited enough that ZeroCon Brisbane sold out, despite its 3,500 tickets costing over a grand each. We have a fanatical support base. People are paying for merchandise. Usually at conferences, they're like giving that stuff away. People are buying Zero swag. Amazing, man. Like, this is my second ZeroCon. Oh, I love it. Zero usually pumps you up. It's so exciting what the industry is doing. Because everything is um, cloud-based and I can work for the clients remotely. What do you do with that freedom? Oh, just uh, family time, spend more time with the family, holidays. I play cricket. Actually speaking, Zero gave me life, actually. Yet for all its excited fans, Zero remains a tech company. Part of a business sector that is run by megalomaniacs who let elections be hijacked. It's a bad scene. But at least Zero doesn't shy away from that. You're also allowing, you know, algorithms to be written uh, by one sort of small sector of society, and largely that's, you know, young white men sitting in Silicon Valley. <laughs> and um, naturally, I think experiences are going to be skewed because you haven't got diversity in tech. And don't get me started on tax. One of Zero's big selling points is that it makes tax easy for small businesses to pay, while other big tech companies avoid it any way they can. When it comes to tax, there is, uh, you could say, a certain irony between that and some other tech companies that are actively um, looking at opportunities potentially to lower the amount of tax that they can pay. As exciting as tax is, it's just possible that ZeroCon's legendary after party is a bigger draw. Last year you looked up and there was someone hanging from the ceiling. It's going to be a blast. It's so good that they won't let the media in to see. So Jose and me had our own party. <laughs> Ultimately, Zero is like any other tech giant in that it contains contradictions. It automates away some jobs while creating others. It's helped make Peter Thiel even richer, while also being beloved by both customers and staff. It's also slightly weird, so no matter how big Zero gets, it will always keep a little bit of New Zealand in it. Duncan Grieve, The Spin-Off TV. Oh.